Tahi. Frederick Henson designed the way we sealed many a road in 1935. His constructed method would last a good 50 years. Tends to slip under the radar that a chip seal is a local creation. Croft Aeromobile. The 1922 a Croft Aeromobile is staring back at you. It was built by Edgar Croft, originally of Auckland, using aeroplane parts and a motorcycle engine and a propeller at the back for propulsion. Croft was a Kiwi who shifted to the States to make his fortune. That's him at the wheel. Someone may be able to tell us what happened to Eddie in the comments. The Totalizator Board. Like the Pavlova, you can argue till the cows come home if it's inventor. George Julius was a Kiwi, having been born in England, schooled in Christchurch. His father was actually the Anglican Archbishop of our entire land, then shifted to Australia to take up a job after being at Canterbury University. What we can be sure of is the first tote was installed at Ellerslie Racecourse and went live on the 22nd of March 1913. Speaking of race courses in Auckland, here's a Frederick Sanford and William Miller using the main straight at Avondale as their takeoff and landing runway. The year is 1913. They had bigger and better plans for the unique, if not somewhat dodgy design. Only lack of money and the little matter of a global conflict destroyed their plans. The Taylor Flying Machine. Speaking of plans, that's all that remained for the Taylor flying machine. Mercifully for anyone wanting to pilot it, examine it for a second or two. Then shudder. Death on wings. All three of them. The Dickey and Brown a stamp vending machine. The first machine debuted in 1906 and was an immediate hit. It was the brainchilds of Robert Dickey and John Brown. Dickey worked in Wellington's main post office and got frustrated ripping apart sheets of stamps for a single stamp. 18,000 vending machines were exported from New Zealand alone. They were also manufactured overseas under license under the name Kermode. Same in the US. The original design was improved on in the 20s and wouldn't cease production until 1962. The Calendar Hamilton Bridge. Civil engineer Archibald Hamilton remains a virtual unknown here in New Zealand. One of the earliest videos I did last year was on an amazing piece of engineering he undertook in Kurdistan, late 20s and early 30s. There's still a highway there named after him. One of his other forgotten claims to fame was the design of the bridge in front of you. He perfected the design and construction on site in the remote Middle East. If you're wondering about the name Calendar and where that fitted in, Calendar was the British manufacturing company. Hamilton's bridge worked like a giant Meccano set. If it looked to you like a Bailey bridge, that's because Bailey's still part of the design and Hamilton ended up suing them and winning. They were standard kit for the British engineers in WW2. Despite being a supposedly temporary and easily erectable bridges to transport troops and vehicles over in say the jungles of Burma etc. There are still plenty of examples from the war in Europe and Asia kicking about. The one you are looking at is from Nova Scotia in Canada. They remained in production in the 50s and 60s. I'll pop a link to the video I did on him below in the description. Terry Roycroft amphibious car. That's the inventor driving his amphibious car in the mid 90s. The first high speed capable car come boat that didn't sink in a mild swell was aluminium and powered by a Subaru 1600 engine. One of New Zealand's richest men, Alan Gibbs, saw its potential and he purchased the patent and it went into production in the United Kingdom, retaining the Gibbs name. Originally dubbed the Equator, the swankier versions of the original came with a hefty price tag. 
over 400k. This bomb movie, Mobile, has morphed into a larger range as far as I can tell. For more combined land and sea capable vehicles, check out The Thurmet, John Hart, an electrical engineer, came up with the idea in 1929, a design that essentially hasn't changed since day one. Indeed, there are brand spanking new models on the net of what were first called the Kitchen Kettle. The Kiwi troops in the desert in World War II dubbed it the Benghazi Boiler. My father's one still works a treat and it's got to be 60 if it's a day. If there is ever a zombie apocalypse, this is one of the 10 essentials of life. Victor Penny and his death ray, Auckland mechanic and dabbler. Penny showed us you could knock up a half decent weapon of mass destruction in your garage. Had the defence force positively salivating, to the point they allocated him an island to continue his experiments. To find out where that little number went, I've done a separate video on that which follows after this or you can find a link in the description below by the way no animals or humans were harmed in the making of that particular video the Hayes wire strainer like the Fermet the basic design hasn't changed for close to a century the first model came out of Ernest's barn come shed in Oteri Hua in central Otago in 1905 along, I might add, with a wide range of farm implements he concocted that were better, for, as far as he was concerned, for farmers than the existing ones. Hayes himself was a prodigious inventor, from windmills that produce electricity to power a shed to cattle stops. His wife Hannah was the company sales rep. Despite being a mother of nine, she went door to door around Otago with samples of the family range, all by bike. Only it was another Otago-ite who invented a virtually identical wire strainer. First, not Hayes, the other bloke was called John Reed. Reed was on the scene a decade before Hayes. The strainer we know today was a Reed knockoff, more the improved work of Ernest's son, Lou, in the 1920s than the old man. Hayes Engineering Works is compulsory viewing next time you're down in Central. The workshop remains a time capsule from 75 years ago, a gem of a joint. There you have it, that's the first 10 of them you may or may not have heard of. There is of course way, way more, expect a follow up or two or three in the future. If you can add to any of the stories here, stick the details in the comments and go for gold. Don't forget to check out in greater depth the videos I've done about Archibald Hamilton, his bridges and highways, plus Mr. Penny's pre-war 2 death ray remains to this day the benchmark for weird and wonderful things to knock up in the shed. May also give you an idea what to do with that old black and white tally. Also, should you have any other suggestions as to Kiwi inventions or to include in follow-ups, hit the fourth in the comments as well. Clearly, I'm not adverse to hearing about the dead and eclectic. In fact, double points for odd and quirky. Thanks for tuning in. Bye for now.